Hi kids, it's me, Miss Booksy, and it's story time here at Cool School. I think we should check back in with Alice, don't you? After all her adventures in Wonderland, I'd like to see what she's up to. Okay, this is Through the Looking Glass, Chapter One. Cool School style, of course. <laughs> Here we are, six months after her trip to Wonderland. Alice was playing in the parlor. That was her favorite room in the house. The parlor was where I studied books and poems and maps. And it's where I would play chess with my two best pals, Kitty and Snowball. Meow. Alice had just called checkmate. That means I'm about to win, Kitty. I'm very sorry, but you just aren't playing very well. Have you been practicing? Really? <laughs> Every night you practice? I don't believe you. <laughs> and Snowball, you aren't even paying attention. Meow. Oh sure, just play with your yarn. <sighs> Why are you so naughty? I ought to toss you through the looking glass. Meow. What's a looking glass? It's a mirror, silly cat. <laughs> Alice showed her kittens the giant mirror. See, there's another world in there. I think everything is backwards over there but nobody really knows for sure. No one has ever even gone through. Snowball bopped her ball of yarn and it went rolling through the looking glass. Snowball, go get it. Meow. You kittens are so adorable, but not very good at tricks. <laughs> I guess I'll just have to go get it myself. Whoa, cool, I'm here. <laughs> Look, Snowball, Kitty, I'm through the looking glass. I guess they can't hear me. I suppose I never did hear anything from the other side before. Now where's that yarn? <laughs> it's funny, I would have expected it to look the same over here, but it doesn't. Hey, <laughs> it's summer here. On the other side, it was winter. <gasps> There's a chessboard, just like mine. I don't are know the pieces where moving? Where's my kitten? Oh, kitty, where are you? They're talking. Look, the red queen piece is yelling at the white king. <gasps> You've lost my kitten, you rat. I did no such thing. Oh, she has a kitten too. It must be the tiniest kitten. I should help. Ah, oh, giant, put, put us, us down. down. Shh, I won't hurt you. I want to help you find your kitten. But Alice didn't realize that because she was so big, her voice sounded quite scary to the little king and queen. What they heard was, I won't hurt uh, you. What? Let go of us. Oh, okay. Ah! Geez, I was only trying to help. They didn't even say thank you. Then Alice saw a great big book. What's this? Yabba da 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 da. Huh? Oh, it's backwards. <laughs> because everything looks backwards in mirrors, I'll just hold it up to the looking glass and then I'll be able to read it. Jabberwocky? What's that? Beware the Jabberwock, my son. The jaws that bite, the claws that catch. Beware the Jub Jub bird and the frimmiest bandersnatch. I wonder what a Jub Jub bird looks like. <laughs> and what the heck is a bandersnatch? He took his vorpal sword in hand. Long time, the maxim foe he sought. So rested he by the tum-tum tree. I bet a tum-tum tree has all kinds of yummy things inside <laughs> and growls when it's hungry. The jabberwock with eyes of flame came whiffling through the tulgy wood and burbled as he came. One, two, one, two, and through and through the vorpal blade went snicker-snack. Mmm, snicker-snack. <laughs> And hast thou slain the Jabberwock? Come to my arms, my beamish boy. Oh, frabjous day, kaloo kalay. He chortled in his joy. Oh, frabjous day? Who says that? <laughs> um, I think that was a very good poem, <laughs> but I'm not sure I understood it. But I am positive I would not like to meet any Jabberwockies. <laughs> Actually, I should definitely, probably go back to my side of the looking glass. No Jabberwockies there. But then again, maybe I should explore a little. It does look like a really nice day outside. Alice started for the stairs and then realized she wasn't walking, but floating down them. Whoa! <laughs> she floated down the stairs and to the door. 
Okay, this definitely never happened on the other side of the looking glass. Hi girls and boys, it's time for chapter two of Cool Schools Through the Looking Glass with me, Miss Booksy. <laughs> In chapter one, Alice had gone through the other side of the mirror, AKA the looking glass. <laughs> let's see what she's up to now. Chapter two, let's go. Hey, this is kind of like Wonderland. <laughs> I just floated like a feather into this lovely, but giant flower garden. <laughs> and things that don't usually talk and walk are talking and walking. <laughs> I better not eat any weird cookies or follow any rabbits. Or pick any flowers. What? I said do not pick the flowers. Are you really a flower? <laughs> yes, I am. And I prefer not to be picked. Oh, of course. I would never. <laughs> May I ask, how did you learn to talk? How did you learn to talk? I suppose my parents taught me. <laughs> I don't really remember. I was just a baby. <laughs> Can all flowers talk? Yeah, but we usually wait until spoken to. What kind of flower are you? I'm not a flower. <laughs> Your petals are so strange. This is my hair. <laughs> and look, she has two stems. How odd. Alice didn't like being made fun of, so she changed the subject. Do any other plants talk? The tree says bow wow. That's why its branches are called boughs. Oh. You didn't know that? Stop teasing our guest. They know I can't reach them. If I could, I would bop them and pull their petals. Allow me. <laughs> if you don't be quiet, I'll pick you. Ah! ah! Alice tried to change the subject again to something nicer than daisy pulling. How is it you can all talk so well? I've been in many gardens before, but none of the flowers could talk. Put your hands down and feel the ground. Then you'll know why. Okay. It's very hard, but I don't see what that has to do with anything. In most gardens, they make the flower beds too soft, so the flowers all fall asleep. Oh, I would have never thought of that. <laughs> well, you don't look very smart. I never saw a flower that looked sillier. Enough. I'm sorry, they've never seen anything like you, but that's no excuse to be rude. Definitely not. So if they've never seen anything like me, does that mean I'm the only person around here? Well, there is one other thing in the garden that can move around like you. She's very red, like a rose. I think I'll go look for her. Maybe she could show me around. Good luck. Alice said goodbye and began to walk away when she heard a very strange, very tiny sound. What's that? It sounds like it's coming from below my feet. Eek! Don't you see the sign? Keep off the grass? Yeah, step off, Bigfoot. Oh, I'm sorry. Alice hopped off the grass and onto the stone path. I guess I'll have to be careful around here. Stones don't have feelings, do they? No, you're good. Okay, thanks. I'll just stick to the stones. Bye! Bow wow. Alice walked along the path, looking for the red girl that Tiger Lily had described. There she is! <laughs> Yoo-hoo! Hello! Call me your majesty. I'm sorry, your majesty. Oh, you're the red queen, aren't you? But you were so tiny before. Don't you remember when I held you in my hand? You're talking nonsense, and you should curtsy when you see a queen. Right, um, your majesty, I was wondering if you could tell me how to get up that hill? Come with me. The queen began to run and Alice followed, but soon she realized they were just running in circles. Faster, 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 faster. I'm getting dizzy. Faster, and stop. Ugh. I've never felt so dizzy and wobbly and whoa. Are you thirsty? Here, have a cookie. Alice took the cookie just to be polite, even though she knew it would only make her thirstier. Better? Mm, I'm still thirsty, but hey, we're on a hilltop. And look, the land is separated into perfect squares, <laughs> just like a chessboard. I wanna play. Just move from square to square. If you get lost, ask a knight for help. And if you see the king, be sure to curtsy. I will, thanks. <laughs> and just like that, the Red Queen was gone, as if she had been picked up and placed elsewhere. I forgot to ask if she found her kitten. Oh well, 
time to go play. <laughs> Hi kids, Miss Booksy here at Cool School. Today we're reading about Alice in Through the Looking Glass Chapter 3. At the end of Chapter 2, Alice had just reached the top of the hill and saw that the land was divided into squares, just like a chessboard or a checkerboard. <laughs> Let's see what happens next. Okay, Through the Looking Glass Chapter 3. If this is all a big game of chess, I wonder what piece I could be. Hmm. I would like to be a queen, naturally. <laughs> Queens can move anywhere on the board and go farther than any game pieces. <laughs> I definitely wouldn't want to be a pawn. They can only move one step at a time. <sighs> Boring. And they can only go forward. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta go side to side. Like when you're line dancing. Or playing tennis. Hmm, I wonder why there are kings and queens in chess but no princes or princesses. Anyway, let's go see if there's anyone around who can tell me the rules of real life chess. Everything looks the same. <laughs> oh, but there's a train. Maybe that's how I get to the next square. All aboard. Ticket, please. I don't have a ticket. Ticket, please. I still don't have one. Just give him your ticket. Um, how about this? I got it from the Red Queen. Thank you, have a nice day. Why are you looking at me through binoculars? Is that better? Mm, I'm still confused. How about now? Have you lost your eyeglasses or something? <laughs> I never had any. I'm a butterfly. And nearly all butterflies are nearly blind. Oh, I didn't know. <laughs> A butterfly with eyeglasses. Who ever heard of such a thing? But you have. Never mind. Ticket, please. But I already gave you a cookie. Ticket, please. And I told you I don't have a ticket. Well, then, you must leave the train. You want me to jump? Go ahead and jump. Use your wings. Easy for you to say, Madam Butterfly. Oh, hmm. To stop train, pull here. Okay. <laughs> Gotta go. Bye. Oh, looks like I'm in a new chess square. Okay, where to next? Oh, <laughs> this way to the house of Tweedledum and Tweedledee. Hey, I've heard of them before. They're in a nursery rhyme. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hi Tweedledee. Hi Tweedledum. <laughs> if you're here for our autographs, don't bother. We don't have a pen. And we don't know how to write. Oh well, that's all right. I just came to say hello. <laughs> I'm just wandering around this place, and you're the first people I actually know. Well, you know what I mean. <laughs> From the nursery rhyme? That's all made up pretend stuff. It's just silly. Wait, how does it go again? Allow me. <laughs> Tweedledum and Tweedledee agreed to have a battle. Not true. For Tweedledum said Tweedledee had spoiled his nice new rattle. Oh, I never even had a rattle. Just then flew down a monstrous crow, <gasps> as black as the tar barrel. I've never even seen a crow round these parts. Which frightened both the heroes so, they quite forgot their quarrel. And we don't get frightened, because we are so very brave. Crow! Oh wait, brother, that's just a little butterfly. Phew, we're safe. Good thing you guys are so brave. So you like poems and rhymes, huh? Yes. Well, some poems. I didn't really get the one about the Jabberwocky with the Jub-Jub birds and the Frabjus Joy and whatnot. <laughs> and I definitely did not like the one about the Knave of Hearts either. <laughs> long story. Oh, good idea. I'll read a long poem. Oh, I hope it's not too long. I should probably be going. Shh, Tweedledee, start the poem. Uh, 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 um. This is a really good poem, and Tweedledee is amazing at reciting poetry. What's that, Tweedledum? I said you are amazing at reciting poetry, Tweedledee. Oh, thanks, Tweedledum. No problem, Tweedledee. Action! What? Oh, oh, yes. Finally. Shh. Ladies and gentlemen, Tweedledee and Tweedledum Productions present The Walrus and the Carpenter. Hi kids, it's time for story time at Cool School with me, Miss Booksy. <laughs> Today we're reading Through the Looking Glass, Chapter 4. At the end of Chapter 3, Tweedledee was just about to perform the poem, The Walrus and the Carpenter. Let's check it out. <laughs> the Walrus and the Carpenter. 
The sun was shining on the sea, shining with all his might. And this was odd because it was the middle of the night. That's right, I do whatever I want. Alice, you be the moon. Okay. Yes, it's very rude of the sun to come and spoil my fun. The sea was wet as wet can be. The sands were dry as dry. You could not see a cloud because no cloud was in the sky. No birds were flying overhead. There were no birds to fly. Not even any scary crows. <gasps> Thank goodness for that. Okay, now you guys be the walrus and the carpenter. Okay. <laughs> if all the sand were only cleared away, it would be grand. Hey, oysters, come and walk with us. I do beseech. A pleasant walk, a pleasant talk along the briny beach. Four young oysters hurried up, all eager for the treat. Their coats were brushed, their faces washed, their shoes were clean and neat. And this was odd because, you know, they hadn't any feet. Four other oysters followed them, and yet another four. And thick and fast they came at last, and more, and more, and more. All hopping through the frothy waves, all scrambling to the shore. A loaf of bread is what we chiefly need. Now if you're ready, oysters, dear, we begin to feed. But not on us, the oysters cried, turning a little blue. After such kindness, that would be an awful thing to do. Oh no, I just remembered, at the end, the walrus and the carpenter eat all the oysters. <gasps> Poor little oysters. Yes, and it's especially sad because I don't think oysters are very tasty. You're spoiling my poem. Maybe we should change it to be about peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Okay. Sounds good to me. Now let's get back to the poem. <laughs> oh, oysters. <gasps> I mean PB and J's. You've had a pleasant run. Shall we be trotting home again? And their answer, there was none. And that was not odd because they'd eaten every one. The end. See, much better that we changed it to peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. <laughs> hey, I think it's gonna rain. Not under here. Hey, what's this? Why, it's a rattle, just like your nursery rhyme. And it's spoiled. It's just an old rattle, Tweedledum. Get over it. No, it's not old. It was brand new, Tweedledee. And you spoiled it. I thought you said that nurse rhyme about you was all made up. <laughs> prepare to battle, Tweedledee. No, you prepare to battle, Tweedledum. I think I know how this ends. Just like the nursery rhyme. <laughs> it was so nice to meet you, Tweedledum and Tweedledee. I'll just be going now. Okay. We really are brave. Right. I know. <laughs> See ya. Hey, it's the White Queen. Alice, I've been looking everywhere for you. Hi, kids. It's time for story time at Cool School with me, Miss Booksy. Today, we're reading Chapter 5 of Through the Looking Glass. The last time we saw Alice, she had just met up with the White Queen, who said she was looking for her. <gasps> what do you think she wants? I've been looking everywhere for you. For me? Uh-oh, did I do something wrong? Not yet. Huh? What will I do? I'm not yet sure, but you certainly will do something wrong at some point. Oh no, I hope not. Anyway, I needed to find you because there is a bee on my face and I can't swat it away. Alice looked and looked, but she just didn't see a bee on the White Queen's face at all. Your Majesty, there's no bee on your face. But there will be a bee, and when it is there, I will need you to swat it off. You want me to swat a bee off your face in case a bee lands on your face later? Yes, except a bee will land on my face. You can see the future? Wow, that's so cool. What's my future? Am I gonna marry a prince? Or have a high-powered job in a major law firm? Or finally learn how to play a trumpet? You're a silly girl. I don't see the future. I just remember the future. How can you remember something that hasn't happened yet? In the looking glass, time doesn't work the same way. You silly folks on your side of the glass can only remember backwards. But in the looking glass, you can remember backwards and forwards. That doesn't make sense to me. We are like a swing going back and forth and up and down. But your world is like a slide. You can only remember remember things one way. And sure enough, while the White Queen explained this to Alice, a bee landed on her face. Your Majesty, a bee has landed on your face! Exactly as I remembered. Hold still while I swat it away. 
Oh, Jealous, that hurts. I haven't done anything yet. But you will. You will slap me to get the bee away and it will hurt. Shame on you. <sighs> I'm just gonna go with this. Wow, rude. Sorry, I just can't seem to figure out what is considered right and wrong here. The looking glass is a strange place. As Alice turned back around to face the White Queen, she found that the Queen was no longer a queen at all. <laughs> Your Majesty, did you turn into a sheep? <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't speak sheep. Ba 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 ba. As Alice bawed back at the sheep, she realized that by speaking in its own language, she was able to understand what the sheep was saying. Bah. Yes, I own a shop just around the corner. Would you like to come see it? Bah. I wonder what they have here. I would love to buy an umbrella for the rain, or a crown for my head, or even a I heart looking glass t-shirt. <laughs> Oh, right. Bah. We have lots of things for sale. Actually, it's mostly soup. Would you like soup? Bah. Goose, where are the vegetable soups? Hey, we got them in the vegetable soup aisles. Of course, where else would they be? <laughs> Maybe I just shouldn't get anything today. I don't think I even brought my purse with me into the looking glass. Bah. Oh, I know. Do you know how to get to the next row of the chessboard? Nope. Oh, I know. I can find out how to get to the next part if I climb this tree. Maybe then I'll be high enough to see where I can go next. And so Alice hoisted herself onto the tree that housed the general store and climbed. She climbed higher and higher and higher and higher and refused to look down. It's okay, Alice. I've got this girl. Uh, work those arms, uh, and don't look down. As Alice looked down, she noticed something peculiar. Even though she had been climbing for many minutes, she was no further off the ground than she had been before. And yet, the general store and the knitting sheep were gone. Instead, she was in a different place. This place is so backwards. The queen turned into a sheep, which I could only understand if I bawed. And that crab was named Goose? And I have no idea where I am. Suddenly Alice heard a peaceful voice from overhead. I know where you are, child. Who's that? You're almost to the next square. All you have to do is pass the gate of this wall up ahead. It's guarded by all the king's horses and all the king's men know, so be polite and be careful. You're a talking egg? Yeah, on top of that, I know a lot of languages. I can speak human, I can speak egg, I can speak looking glass, I can speak nonsense. I heard a poem today that was all nonsense. I didn't understand any of it. Maybe I can help. My apologies, I never introduced myself. My name is Humpty Dumpty. Wait, you're Humpty Dumpty? As in the Humpty Dumpty? Oh my gosh, this is so cool. Hi kids, it's time for story time at Cool School with me, Miss Booksy. I'm so excited to read chapter six of Through the Looking Glass. Alice just met Humpty Dumpty from the nursery rhyme. What do you think will happen next? Hmm. So, you've heard my name before. Yes, you're really famous where I'm from. And there's a song about you and everything. <laughs> that sounds nice. Can you recite it to me? Of course. <clears throat> Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. <sighs> well, I would clap, but I don't have hands. That's okay. <laughs> I hope it's just a silly rhyme and not a prophecy. My wall is my happy place. It keeps my chakras aligned. You sound like you're speaking nonsense again, like that Jabberwocky poem I read earlier. I told you I'm fluent in nonsense. I can maybe help translate it for you. Yay! Do you remember how the entire Jabberwock poem went? Beware the Jabberwock, my son. 
the jaws that bite, the claws that catch. Beware the chub chub bird and the frimious bandersnatch. He took his vorpal sword in hand. Long time the maxim foe he sought. So rested he by the tum tum tree. The jabberwock with eyes of flame came whiffling through the tulgy wood and burbled as he came. One, two, one, two, and through and through the vorpal blade went snicker snack. And hast thou slain the jabberwock? Come to my arms, my beamish boy. O oh, frabjous day, kalu kalay. He chortled in his joy. What a strange poem, but it makes perfect sense to me. Which part of that did you not understand? Long time the man's own foe he sought. What does that mean? Manxum is a combo of manly and buxom. Many of the words in this poem are created by putting existing words together and making a new word out of it. That's a portmanteau. Bless you. Now burbled, that must be bleeding, murmuring, and warbling all at once. What a multitasker. Respect. And frabjous? Fabulous and joyous, like all days should be. Wow, I guess the poem makes more sense when you think of it that way. I love poems. Can I recite one for you? Is it going to take a while? I'll tell you the short version. <clears throat> I sent a message to the fish. I told them this is what I wish. The little fishes of the sea, they sent an answer back to me. The little fish's answer was, we cannot do it, sir, because... Because why? That's the end of the poem. Ah. Well... That was pointless. I'm gonna go to the game. Bye, Humpty Dumpty. It's cool. Well, I can wait here for someone else to put me up right. Oh, it's open. That's easy enough. Whoa. Um, excuse me. Um, pardon me. Uh, coming through. Um, can I speak to your manager? That would be me. What are you doing? I'm drawing my memoir. Here's me as a baby making daisy chains in the garden. Here's me as a teenager listening to rock music. And here is me as a young man fighting a jabberwock. Oh, I've heard of that one. Good. Usually nobody's heard of it. I've heard of it. So that makes two people who know of my adventures now, you and nobody. What? Nobody isn't a person. Yes, he is. He's standing right there. There's nobody there. Exactly. See, you get it. You get me. Hello, King. Hello, my messengers. Who did you see on the road ahead? Nobody. That can't be right. Nobody is right here. We do have news, though. It's so peculiar that you both speak together at the exact same time. Thank you. We've been practicing a long time. We've got this routine down pat. That's very impressive. You humble us. This is merely a testament to what you can do with hard work and also a nearby dance studio to practice synchronizing in. Did we mention we also have a dancing routine? You did not. Well, here goes nothing. It's not much of a dance. But it's choreographed perfectly. I guess that's true. Anyway, we came to tell you what's ahead. It appears there's a fight in the room. A fight? Oh no! Who's fighting? Them. Them? Oh, them. They're always fighting. It's very rude of them to fight. Oh, uh, can someone please explain to me what's going on here? We're sorry, we, we should, should have clarified. The them we are fighting is the lion and the unicorn. Whoa, a lion and a unicorn in the same place? <gasps> what are they fighting over? My crown. <gasps> Why are they fighting each other if you have the crown? They're not very smart. If you would like, we'll tell you all about them. Yes, please. Hi kids, it's story time at Cool School with me, Miss Booksy. We just read chapter six of Through the Looking Glass where the king's messengers are about to tell Alice the story of the lion and the unicorn. Chapter seven is next, so give us a thumbs up if you're ready. I can't wait to hear all about the lion and the unicorn. We shall tell the tale. The lion and the unicorn were fighting for the crown. The lion beat the unicorn all around the town. 
Some gave them white bread, some gave them brown, some gave them plum cake and drummed them out of town. So does the one that wins the fight win the crown? No, it's my crown. Come this way. And so Alice followed her new companions along the path until they came upon a small town. A huge crowd was gathered around the center of the town square. Check. Check. Now friends, let's take a break for refreshments. Bread for everyone. Bread isn't a great refreshment. There is also plum cake. Ugh. Ooh. I feel like I'm too full to eat anything. You ate too much plum cake. But I didn't eat any cake. Yes, but you will. And when you do, you will have eaten so much that you are full now. Ugh, the rules of the looking glass are so annoying. That's it, I'm gonna find the next square. So Alice walked away from her companions and soon found herself in a colorful forest filled with jujube -jub birds, tum-tum -tum trees, and a cute little duck. Yo. When out of nowhere <laughs> appeared a figure, a white knight. I'm here to rescue you. Rescue me? From what? I don't know. I'm a white knight. That's just what I do. Oh, are you okay? Of course. That's the only proper way to dismount a horse. I respectfully disagree. I will accompany you to the next square, but that's as far as I can go. That's fine, I don't mind your company. <laughs> Alice and the White Knight walked through the colorful forest, although the knight did keep falling off his horse and Alice did need to help him up several times. You're not very good at riding horses, I see. I'm the best rider there is in the looking glass. <laughs> hey, what's that you got there? It's something I invented. It's a pouch that I can keep sandwiches in, but unlike other pouches, it faces down so that the rain can't get in it. But if the opening is on the bottom, won't the sandwiches fall out? Yes, but it does keep the pouch dry. What's the point of carrying it if you can't put anything in it? But if I could put something in it, it would be dry. I think your invention needs some work. Have you invented anything else? Yes, I've invented something that keeps your hair from falling out. See, hair always falls out because it always hangs down, because of gravity. But if hair always hung up, then it wouldn't fall out because it would just fall up. I don't think that's how it works. And so you train your hair to grow around this stick so that your hair always falls up and never falls out. I don't think gravity is why people lose hair. Well, what is it then? Aging, stress. This is where I must leave you. Oh, thank you for walking me through the forest. <laughs> I'll have to check out some of your inventions sometime. Before you go, may I tell you a poem? Sure, I guess. Is it a long one? I've heard a lot of poems today. <clears throat> this poem is called, I give thee all, I can no more. I tell thee everything I can, there's little to relate. I saw an aged man, a sitting on a gate. Who are you, aged man, I said, and how is it you live? And his answer tricked through my head, like water through a sieve. He said, I look for butterflies that sleep among the wheat. Hey, wake up! The poem's not over yet. Oh, sorry. You know what? I think I'd better go and get to the end of the chessboard. It's been a long day. Very well, then. Goodbye. I did it! I'm here! <laughs> Maybe they'll let me be queen now. <gasps> oh my gosh! What is that on my head? Hi kids, welcome back to Storytime at Cool School with me, Miss Booksy. In chapter seven, Alice had just made it to the end of the chessboard in hopes of becoming queen when she felt something on her head. Ooh, what do you think it is? I hope it's not an elephant. <laughs> We're reading chapter eight today and it's the final chapter of Through the Looking Glass. Something's on my head. It's heavy, it's, it's, <gasps> A crown? I mean, a crown! I did it! I'm a queen now! <laughs> Alice was overcome with so much joy that she began dancing and talking to herself. What am I gonna do now that I'm queen? Oh, I guess I can drink tea and be friends with everyone and everyone will like me because I'm queen! And I can talk to anyone I want to, whenever I want. <laughs> and they'll say, hello, your majesty, and I'll say, please, your majesty was my mother's name. <laughs> She was having so much fun on her own, she didn't even notice when some familiar faces approached. 
I do say you are very silly. Are you talking to yourself? Queens don't talk to themselves. They talk to their subjects. Subjects? Yes. Tell this young lady to stop talking to herself. Stop, stop talking, talking to yourself. yourself. Thank you. Now, Red Queen, I would like to invite you to Alice's queen party this afternoon. You're throwing me a queen party? That's so fun. <laughs> oh, no, dear, you're throwing the party. We're just the guests. Oh, I like parties and I like throwing parties, but I don't like throwing parties without anyone telling me that I'm throwing a party. We just told you now, your party is very soon. I hope you've prepared enough snacks for all of us. We love snacks. Peanut butter and jelly sandwiches that are cut into triangles. Oh no, how am I gonna do all this in just a few minutes? Um, oh, I have an idea. Subjects? Yes. Can you help me set up a party for myself? There must be PB&Js cut into triangles and lots of flowers like tiger lilies and daisies and butterflies and rattles and oysters and crabs and eggs and plum cake. Oh, oh dear. Watching all these subjects work makes me so oh, sleepy. Alice, can you sing me a lullaby? I would, but I'm afraid I don't know any lullabies. What a silly thing to be afraid of. I'm not afraid of that. I'm just saying that I don't know any. Here, I'll teach you one. hush a -bye, lady in Alice's lap. Till the feast's ready, we've time for a nap. When the feast's over, we'll go to the ball. Red Queen and White Queen and Alice and all. That was really nice. But the White Queen was already asleep. In fact, both queens had fallen asleep. <clears throat> Guys, I mean, uh, your majesties, <laughs> does this mean that the party's off? Queen Alice, Queen Alice, give us a speech, 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 speech. Speech? Oh dear, I didn't prepare anything. I hope I say something eloquent. Oh, looking glass creatures, quoth Alice, draw near. Tis an honor to see me, a favor to hear. Tis a privilege high to have dinner and tea, along with the Red Queen, the White Queen, and me. More! more. Speak more, more, Queen Alice, no pressure. Oh, wow, no pressure, huh? Being a queen sure is more work than I thought. Now really, dear, you're being very rude to your subjects. They want to hear you speak. Won't you satisfy them? I don't know what to say. I already said some words to them, or at least I think I did, and they want more from me. Being a queen means always having to give. But I want to do what I want. You can still do that, although people may not like you as much. I thought being a queen would be more fun. That's preposterous. Just because we're the most powerful players in the game doesn't mean we can do anything. We can only move in eight directions, not infinitely. I want to move in infinite directions. I want to be able to go wherever I want on the chessboard. Well, you'll have to make your own way. But in the looking glass, you can either be a queen or you can be you. Never both. You decide who you want to be. How about that? Does a queen pull a tablecloth off of her tables? I bet not. I already told you all, I don't speak nonsense. I don't understand the Jabberwocky poem or most of your other poems. I don't understand your rules or how time and memory works. The Looking Glass is such a strange place. I don't want to be queen! And at that moment, everything stopped. There was no fighting or arguing or queens and subjects. In fact, as Alice looked down, she realized she was sitting in the same chair she had been in before, with her kittens in her lap. Wow, I wonder if that was real or a dream? You were in it, and you were the Red Queen. She was a bit rude. And you were in it too, and you were the White Queen. Actually, I didn't like her very much either. She snored too loud. Yeah, kind of like that, but like... Meow. I agree. 
Ooh, I disagree. <laughs> the only thing I know for sure is that I don't think I'm very good at chess. All of you are doing just fine over there in the looking glass, but maybe that place is not for me. I don't want to remember things before they happen or feel full before I get to eat cake. I'm just Alice. And you know what? I like being Alice. I don't need to be a queen. I just need to be me.